uh, Danhausen slide into our DMs, please. And uh... yes, he has to come to us. <laughs> we, no, we'll go to him. We don't go to him. you. You come to me. Welcome to the Collector's Podcast. I'm Kevin. I'm Matt. And today we have a couple things going on. We have McFarlane and WB talking about continuing their partnership. We also have some new figures from Beast Wars. We have new figures from wrestling stuff, WWE and AEW. And we're looking at vintage versus modern collecting and how that works out for us and which is better, which is easier, which is cheaper. And just kind of the conversation between the two of those. First up, uh, before we get into anything, uh, we have McFarland and WB. Um, so I just think it's kind of interesting with these uh, these partnerships uh, between the IPs of the toy companies. Um, and I, I think it's kind of destined that uh, DC and Marvel will always be separate. Uh, DC with WB and Marvel being uh, by itself over at uh, Hasbro. Um, but it's just, it's kind of interesting that they just happen to be separate. It's kind of what you would expect, right? I'm trying to think, are there any other like competitor companies that both have like big toy lines? Like, yeah, I guess you could say WWE and AEW, which are on opposite one or not opposite, but different ones. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I don't know. Anyways, it was just an interesting thought. Cause I don't know if there's really any like direct competitors that also happen to be held by the same like the same company right same like what would like i mean i'm thinking that the the big ips like star wars what's a competitor i don't think star trek is really a competitor to be honest in the in the merchandising field um but it's not owned by hasbro i think there's some super sevens with them and other things but like i i I just think it makes sense like because why would you want to just go all in on those although they're big money right like no matter what even if their one's doing better than the other like Marvel's always selling well. Obviously, DC is selling well. Obviously, that's why they make a million different figures that are kind of like. So I, I do figure hunts pretty regularly, and I very rarely will see new wrestling figures on the shelf. Like it's very like I'd say like maybe once a month I will see like a big drop. Um, every single time I go to the store, there's different Marvel figures, different DC figures. Like they're so well stocked, and they're clearly selling pretty well for the mm-hmm. most part, with a few exceptions, like the Eternal set that is still on the shelf at Walmart. But no, like it's so it, it makes sense, right? Like it's uh it's good for them, and uh, I love McFarland toys. I haven't bought one in a in a hot minute, probably mm-hmm. since like I bought some some football ones that they do because they do some sports ones. But I always have a soft spot for them because I used to be a huge fan of the Spawn toys growing up. I didn't even like read Spawn or know anything about Spawn. They were it's cool. Like, it was cool. Really cool figures. <laughs> yeah, they had like skulls and big weapons and like, yeah, it was cool. So, uh, yeah, anyways, I'm happy to see them continue and I will continue to probably not collect them. No offense. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I kind of got into that uh, DC Superpowers line. I happen to have Batman just hanging out next to me uh, for a conversation later about uh, retro and uh vintage stuff uh but uh, obviously I, I got a few of those and i got some other ones through them but i think it's a cool nice little line um and uh I mean, they're not as big as hasbro i don't think and so it's it's cool to see these other companies whether it be super seven or NECA, um, going up against like mattel and hasbro the stalwarts of the uh, industry um, and kind of cool to see different properties going different places yeah and the and like different they do different things with it right like the the mcfarland dc toys are like very photorealistic right like if they're the movie figures they're they they look a lot like the the movie characters Mm -hmm. right they're designed whereas when you see like the some of the other ones they're just like the suit like uh the ones you were just talking about sorry i forget the name of dc superpowers yeah superpowers thank you like those are just kind of like cartoony basic ones yeah. um so it's it's nice to have like the the different depending on what you want to collect you can mm-hmm. go through different producers you know they're very distinctly stylized yeah for sure um but speaking of smaller uh uh toy producers uh we have here from jada toys um recently released uh this is i know you've been holding your breath for him uh chester cheeto though um i think these are like no, no way am i gonna buy a chester cheeto no uh, but I think it's really cool. Like that's that's fabulous. You get a little bag of Cheetos. You get a Cheeto club, I guess. Uh, but I think I, I think a Cheeto is- club. <laughs> he, that's his weapon. He comes with a weapon so you can beat up the other mascots. We should. They should do like a whole mascot collection, like Captain mm-hmm. Crunch, Tony the Tiger. They have some. Um, I mean, I'm James Toys has a whole wide line. Uh, yeah, and I feel like with that with the bag of Cheetos, you can use the Cheeto dust and just spray in their eyes and. <laughs> It's yeah, it is. They just like 
like do like the blow it in their eyes and blind them that now i'm just getting into carny wrestling but yeah mr no, fuji I... with assault yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like it so chester cheeto i think it's it's i mean they give him two different heads multiple hands that's the, cool the man. accessories i think it's i think it's a cool toy uh and uh, what's, if you're what's into the that, price on it i don't recall top of my head i think like 35 maybe um, oh man, nothing, I honestly expected 50. it to be like 50. Like that's cheaper than I expected it to be. Cause that looks almost like a borderline NECA in terms of like presentation and accessories. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh I'm a little surprised that it's only 35. Maybe I will buy it. Maybe I'll have to yeah. reconsider. Matt, for the low price of $24.99 in the US, you can get it uh from Big Bad Toy Store. Uh pre-order it because it's getting uh, arriving in September of 2023. So <laughs> That's you can just Big go ahead and order that right now. Bad toy store. <laughs> Get that Cheetos. Uh, so it's a cool line. I, uh, I again, I don't collect it, but it's pretty cool. And uh, I'm always going to uh, say how awesome these things are when I see them, whether I'm going to get them or not. I mean, they got other things like Swamp Thing, uh, some Street Fighter stuff. Uh, so they do the monsters. They do have Count Chocula, um, Frankenberry. <laughs> oh, I've uh, seen those. They had those yeah. in Meyer. For a while, yeah. So, uh, so some interesting figures. I think it's 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 cool to see the different uh, the different varieties that happen, and some people want to be in it. Good for you. I had man. to. I I'm just... probably gonna end up. Can I, who knows? Maybe I won't cancel it. I'll probably forget about it. Forget. That's probably more realistic. And then, and then I'm gonna open yeah. up my pile of loot on Big Bad Toy Store. I'm like, oh Jesus, I totally forgot just about that. Show. And Cheetah then you'll put him in your WWE ring, and he can go against uh, Seth Rollins. It'll be great. Yeah, well, there's gonna. It's actually gonna be the the Flame and Hot Cheetos branded Inferno match against the Fiend. I'm pretty sure like is what I'm Kane versus go the Fiend. With. Yeah, it's good. Just like just like the Mountain Dew Pitch Black. Like that's the next one, right? Is the mm -hmm. Flame and Hot Inferno match? It's only it only makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> moving along to less uh, less ridiculous and kind of cool. Um, this is. Uh, from the Transformers Rise of the Beasts, um, but they just released this is a command and convert animatronic Optimus Primal, um, and so it'll like transform, I guess, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, little uh, so a little bit of a, of a price tag with that. What is it? Uh, I'm gonna look it up right now as I say, oh, okay, that. Fair. I mean, like I'll jeez, like okay, here's so here's I want to see a bit 125. Okay, I want to see a video of it in action, like if and when a video drops, because looking at it, it reminds me, remember those like toy robot dogs that were really big oh, when yeah. we were kids? Uh -huh. And they would kind of do like, you'd like turn it on and it'd like vibrate for a bit and then it'd like do a little backflip and like sometimes it would hit and sometimes it wouldn't, right? That kind of looks like one of those, like if I hit the button on it, like is it just going to like vibrate and then just like flip over and be new because... <laughs> and then switches... <laughs> Right, no, because like, I yeah. want to know, because if it doesn't do, like, some cool, like, multiple movement things, then how is that $125? Unless it's just, like, really big. like uh, Yeah, it's not worth it. Um, it's a cool unless concept. Unless you really want it. Yeah, it's a cool it's concept. Great. Like, if they can make it work, like, and mm -hmm. maybe make it on, like, a smaller, cheaper scale, like, that could be a really cool toy line. But, I like I said, I need to see the movement in action because I still think it's going to be a vibrating, flipping dog. And do you just get that, or is that like added to a display? I don't, it's 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 kind of a cool. I mean, it's a cool idea, but is it going to be the full line? Probably not. No, and like if you're just going to put it on display, why wouldn't you just get, you know, the more like detailed, cheaper one that doesn't have the auto movement, right? Like yeah. if you're going to get that one, it should be because you want to like use and show off that that motion. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. Um, so moving along, uh, we had a big drop of AEW and uh, eventually WWE wrestling figures. So uh, buckle up here. I was super excited. You were excited. I know um, this is the Dan Housen uh, ringside. Very nice. Very evil. Um, this is their special dream, uh, dream ones. guest, dream guest for the collector. So I'm just going to put that nice. out there. And like we have zero percent chance. I, you know what? I'm going to you know what? I'm going to give us more credit. We have one percent, one percent chance. We will um, get him and uh, Ethan Page, and they will come on here. Listen, yes. they're they're Michigan men, right? Like Ethan Page, adopted son of Michigan, Dan yeah. Housen, a Michigan native. Yeah. Um, I think. Listen, I think you know, as fellow Michigan collectors and uh, wrestling Michiganders, nerds, 
Michiganders exactly. uh, that we should be able to unite over a common love of things that are usually made for children. So uh, Dan has inside into our DMs, please. And uh... yes, he has to come to us. <laughs> we, we'll go to him. We don't go to him. you. Yeah. You come to me. Like he'll just be like, "Hey, I'm interested." Yes, you you called me on my Mich- Michigan <laughs> status. Uh, you do, but though, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be great. Right, but that's uh, an awesome dude. That that thing's awesome. Like um, the box the, too. Yeah, the box is one of the coolest boxes I've seen in mm-hmm. recent memory, especially for one that doesn't have a high price tag. Like that display, that is meant to be displayed mint on card to me. Mm -hmm. But what's cool about it is that's obviously a figure that would look good out of the box. It has the soft goods cape. Soft goods cape. Has some like has some really cool gear. Has a couple different heads. Um, but just that that box, man. Like I almost want to buy two of them just so I can have one mint and one loose. But uh, I pre-ordered something else that we might be talking about in terms of AEW pre-orders oh, yeah. that involves Danhausen, mm-hmm. um, so I might only need the one. But uh, I, dude, I, I love it, man. The the box, like how it opens, and if you guys can see, the like cape. the front flap opens, and then it's that his arm holding up the cape, and with his head over the box, so it looks like he is just holding it open. Um, yeah, it's really cool, man. Like if you're, if you're a fan of Danhausen and wrestling, um, I feel like this is one that you're going to have to get. Yeah, definitely a really cool figure. Um, and, uh, we'll talk about some more Danhausen later. Um, but in the meantime, speaking of uh, Danhausen, we have his friend here, Hook, um, not yet available on ringside. Uh, but, uh, this is a special box set, uh, ringside exclusive of Hook. Um, I hadn't seen or heard of this yet, but it's kind of interesting how they're able to do his hair so well, I think is my first. Right. No, I mean like that, his head sculpt is probably like the most detailed one they've ever had to do. Yes. Like even more so than like Penta getting Penta's mask, right? They're like, no, no, no. The hair. This hair. That's why it took so long for this figure to come out because like Hook's been kind of, I don't want to say a big deal because the heat has kind of cooled off on him a little bit, but he was like red hot there for Mm -hmm. a hot minute. And it's been a while, and they're just now announcing this figure, whereas opposed to, like, a Jay White, which they also just recently announced, um, not to jump ahead, but look how quickly they got that one planned. And obviously, Jay White is, a you know, internationally a bigger name than Hook. But, I mean, obviously, Hook has enough attention to warrant getting his own box set. So um, it is surprising that it took this long. And so my hypothesis is that they, they had to wait until the technology was there to get the hair right. You can't rush that, yeah. man. Like, you don't want to get it wrong. You don't. You don't want to get the hair wrong. Cool set there. Another box set here. Um, this is the Sammy Guevara TNT Championship set uh, with the two belts from that story he had of uh, making, uh, becoming the true <sighs> TNT champion. And uh, this it kind of reminds me of the, the uh, Cody Rhodes uh, box set with the TNT Championship yeah. yep. set up. That's so kind of yeah. cool. It's just another did it with Cody, and did they do one with Britt? I can't remember. I believe so. Or is, okay. It might be the Bullet Guts. I don't recall. Nah, man. Either way. The, the, yeah, I don't like Sammy Guevara, um, but respect to him. Kudos to him. It is a pretty cool. I like that it comes with the two different TNT titles. That's something cool that they've done is uh, Jazz uh, Jazzwares has done a good job of releasing the different TNT belts like because it has changed several times to match whoever holds it Mm -hmm. um and it's cool that they've done that I think maybe the only one they haven't really released is the Scorpio Sky one because then he have a Lakers one one. yeah well Um, they're scared they're too scared to release another Scorpio Sky after it peg warmed for so long uh, then maybe they should just release a box set that's just because they just released a belts yeah. one. Maybe they should just release a TNT title one where it's just all the different variations of the TNT title. It'd be they already have the tooling and everything, so may as well cut me in, cut me in, Jazzwares. I I want some credit for this. Yeah, just like when when Taco Bell stole the Dorito Taco from me, which I'll never get over. No. I came up with that idea, and I'm going to pound the table for emphasis, not because I'm legitimately upset. I came up with the idea when I was working there. I was eating a bag of Doritos, and I was like, I don't know if you remember, because you used to work at Taco Bell, not to blow up your spot. But, no, it's, um, we, did, we worked there together. It happened. They used, they used to have like those $3 meals where it was like a burrito, oh, yeah. a bag of Doritos, and a medium drink. And it was I two was dollars, eating, two dollar meal deal. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Um. Anyway, so I was like eating those Doritos one time because I would just steal them and eat them occasionally, and I was eating them, and I said, 
bro, why do we not just make a taco shell out of Doritos? And people laughed at me. And then like a couple years later, I'm not working there anymore. Doritos taco comes out. I'm just saying they were probably listening in on our conversations. And finally, I'm like the janitor that didn't invent the Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Uh, I'm like that guy. They probably just consider the the Doritos that you took uh, as payment for the uh, intellectual property. <laughs> Fair enough. I, you know what? Statute of limitations took a lot of food from Taco Bell over my years <laughs> there that I didn't pay for. So you know what, Taco Bell, you can have that one. That one's okay. free. Next one's going to cost you. That's nice of you uh, giving that to them. Um, but uh, not taco related. Uh, we have Wheeler Yuta Blood and Guts, uh, which is a. a I really like this line. I don't collect any of them, but they look really cool. I collect them, but I I really I really am tempted to display them loose mm-hmm. because they're so cool and unique. Mm-hmm. And they have the dog collar one coming out next month. Mm-hmm. Um, the CM Punk MJF mm-hmm. one where Punk wears the the basketball shorts, um, which I think they've had like all of Punk's different attires so far. And we'll see what he wears for the return. Um, but yeah, dude, like I don't have a Wheeler Yuta figure yet. I like Wheeler Yuta. He's a Philly guy. So shouts to him. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be picking that up. I have all the other blood and guts ones and I, I will definitely not be missing out on that one. Uh, we also had, uh, this was, uh, released. This is one of the, uh, unmatched series, uh, unmatched series nine. Uh, I apologize. Uh, not nine. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Unrivaled Series 14. Uh, and so we had Billy Gunn. We have Jamie Hayter. Um, finally have the Acclaimed with Anthony Bowens and Max Caster. Um, we also have... And Billy Gunn. Yeah, and Billy Gunn. Uh, Keith Lee and uh, Sora Strickland. A lot of new faces here, which is... This is a real stacked uh, stack set here. Yeah, and is that the is that Tony Storm the first one with the new women's title? I would guess so. I don't know. If, I can't remember 100%, but I think they so. They did just recently release a Jamie Hayter, but I don't think she came with the title because she hadn't been champ when that would have been planned. And speaking of titles, uh, the set also has um, uh, Ricky Starks with the FGW title as well. That's pretty cool. Ooh, uh, well, that, might be a, that might be a buy for me just to get that title. That's pretty dope. Unless they have it with the hook, which, I mean, they should, but we'll see. Um, yeah, man, like if you would have told me, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago that I would be excited at the possibility of buying a new modern day Billy Gunn action figure, um, I would have said you're high because that just seems like something I would never want, but skip ahead. And I'm genuinely excited to get that trio. Like I probably won't get the Keith or the Swerve. They are pretty dope figures, although the Keith Lee is essentially just his WWE elites. Um, just, again, um, the Tony Storm's cool, has, like, the Harley Quinn outfit. Um, and then I want the Swerve. Keith Lee with, like, the, the the gray, the full gray. Yeah. I think that's really distinct. I think that's cool. Yeah. And I hope they do that next. I want a Bearcat. Yeah. Bearcat no. Lee. Get, get the basic that WWE put out then. <laughs> Did but they do Bearcat I, Basic? Yeah, Bearcat Basic. Ooh. Hashtag Bearcat Basic. I might have to get that just for the memories. <laughs> just just for the memories. Uh, yes. Um, I'm pretty sure they come with scissor hands, too, so that would be a good reason to get those. Uh, not, Dude, to be clear, not Keith Lee. Bearcat Keith Lee was not known for scissoring <laughs> uh, while Billy Gunn uh, may have been. I mean, if they're coming with the scissoring hands, which it looks like they are, I'm definitely displaying that men or uh, Lucy because I need to have them scissoring. Um, I, man, I don't know if I'm going to get the Billy gun. Like I, it's really cool. And I like Billy and he is definitely part of their team, but at the same time, he's not the acclaimed. Exactly. Like the acclaimed acclaimed or the acclaimed. And I love them. I'm not a cop. And so like, I definitely want to get them scissoring on my shelf, but yeah, it's just a dream to have, these wrestlers scissor- scissoring on our shelves um dream come true uh so we also away from scissoring uh we have dana garcia his first figure uh with ethan page i am psyched about along with dan Housen, uh the figure hunts are yeah. one that i watch i just watched the most recent one today um but i watch those every week and uh just like dan Housen grew to know that know them more through youtube and such uh and so i'm psyched for uh, ethan page Daniel garcia is cool too though is Garcia coming with the pure title? Uh, I can't quite see what belt that is. 
Because um, I feel like it would have. Isn't that the only title he's held in AEW? I think so. So, so that would be the first, if that is the case, that would be the first Ring of Otter title to make an appearance in an AEW I figure. Think, well, it depends on when it's released because I'm pretty sure that the um, uh, Wheeler Yuta one is the pure. Oh, the Wheeler comes with the pure title as well? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. My bad. So I didn't know that. But yeah, um, and so I'm ho- that makes me hopeful. All that is to say, it makes me hopeful that maybe we could get a Claudio with the world title or a Samoa Joe with the TV title. Actually, a mm-hmm. Samoa Joe set with the TV and T and T titles would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that does look like the pure championship, I think. So that yeah. is six seven. That's cool. And a towel, which is dope. I listen, I like Daniel Garcia. I there's a good chance I'll pick that figure up. Ethan Page probably too. I, I love Ethan Page. Like you said, mm-hmm. I'm I, honestly more of a fan of his for his off out of the ring mm-hmm. stuff. Than I am his entering stuff, but that said, he's a great promo. He's a good worker. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to be excited to to grab one of his uh, figures, especially with the jacket. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Couple new figures there haven't been in the line yet. Uh, yet for those. Um, and moving right along, we also have another full set here. Um, we had now this is, doesn't include the mocks, but you get back Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, the Wheeler Yuta, Claudio Castagnoli, um, Brand, uh, Brian Danielson with this just a regular white t shirt, um, which I think is funny. Uh, <laughs> another Jamie Hader, um, and Alex Reynolds finally from the Dark Order, and Jeff Hardy with his face. Uh, just that's really all they showcase. Those that's all it is. It's actually just a box with a disembodied head. You're paying $25 for a box with this mighty. I mean, if it's detailed, might not be the worst, but like it has to be big, right? Actual six inch head. That's what I, I love mean. that they're just like, <laughs> this was like a checklist thing. They're like, all right, so we got Matt Hardy. We should probably release Jeff now that he's kind of, you know, past some of his legal issues for the moment. <laughs> um alex reynolds uh yeah we just made a mistake and never got a lot round of making him for the dark order um then like i don't know bullet uh, blackpool combat club all of them the entire bullet combat club yeah combat club. uh but no it's cool like i i one of the figure sets that i am kind of bummed that i got rid of was my dark order ones because mm-hmm. i did really enjoy the dark order they were one of my favorite parts of like early aew mm-hmm. um so maybe that nah, the Alex Reynolds probably isn't enough to get me to to pick him back up, but uh, it is a little tempting. I'll say. If you're looking That's for him Lucy. I got him Lucy, and I'm uh, looking to looking to get rid of him. So I might yeah. take him. But yeah, that, those are the only like like the Claudio's cool, but I would rather get wait and see if he has one that has the Ring of Honor World Title. Um, Garcia, or I'm sorry, Wheeler Yuta's cool, but I would rather have Blood and the Guts. Blood and Guts Wheeler. Um, Brian Danielson, I would rather have him in gear. Um, Jamie Hader, maybe I like, I do like Jamie Hader. Jeff Hardy, no, I already have enough Jeff Hardys, and I love the Hardy boys, but I've never been a huge mark for them. And like I said, Alex Reynolds with the Dark Order, but yeah. yeah. Jumped out a little quick here, uh, but these are some highlights. This also includes the Elite uh, in this set um, for Unmatched. Um, but this has Kyle O'Reilly for the first time, Brandon Cutler for the first time, and also continuing at the LJN line, Dr. Britt Baker. Um, I was going to give up with this, and I wasn't going to get Darby, and I wasn't going to get CM Punk, but I feel like I might need to continue. Yeah, the, honestly, Loki might be like the most surprising announcement out of all the AEW announcements because, like you, I assumed that that series was kind of dead in the water, the LJN uh I don't know what you want to call it, tribute uh, line that they have. Um, I kind of thought it was done, but obviously, no, they're doing a new one with Britt Baker. I have the Cody. I guess I now need to get the Darby and oh. wait for the Punk. Um, but, yeah, it's a cool line. Listen, man, I have some old LJNs. I like them. They're just, like, just kind of cool figures to just have on display. Obviously, you can't really do a ton with them. Um, it's a big part of figure history, though. Oh, yeah. Like they're huge. Just in, yeah, exactly. Not just in wrestling figure history or wrestling history, but in figure history, they're really cool and monumental. Mm -hmm. And like the first really, really big line, like obviously AWA had the Remco line, um, but I think the LJNs were really like the first big 
uh, like wrestling figure that that capitalized mm -hmm. on some of the momentum and attention it had. But yeah, so I'm I'm excited to get the Britt Baker. It almost doesn't look cartoony enough, but obviously it's not like we'll see once the paint right? gets on and deco and everything. Right, but she looks like too. She looks like too small. But I guess it is like the LJN. Uh, the women, the couple women that did have LJNs were pretty small, so I guess it, it tracks. Yeah, interested to see that, and also you have the big rubber guys uh, that the major wrestling faker podcast just recently put out. Um, so uh, maybe a resurgence for LGMs here. It's kind of we'll see. We'll see what happens. And you know what? Hey, uh, shout out to Brandon Cutler for finally getting a figure. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Michael Nakazawa next, and I can create oh, a collection I'm never going to make. Right. <laughs> Uh, moving along, Jid Cargill. This is one of 3,000 available on AEW Shop, I believe, currently. Um, but uh, pretty iconic gear that she has. Uh, she hasn't lost, but has she really beaten anyone? Um, that's another. Oh, she lost. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. Spoiler I alert. Yeah, spoiler no, I, alert. I didn't watch it, but I had seen. Yeah, with the returning. Uh, spoiler. Yeah. Uh, returning alien of, our, of ours. Um, but. Uh, Christine. That belt is way too big. It is, uh, and I think they may have no. They re re they retooled the uh, WWE women's title, so they're smaller. But uh, they good the TNT champ. The TBS title is way too big. Yeah, they like it, it's smaller. it's like I understand it's probably hard to get the details like mm -hmm. correct with a much smaller title, but like. It just, mm -hmm. to, I don't know. Maybe it's just, I'm just nitpicking, but like it just looks weird on her shoulder like that. Like it just it does. doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also have Eddie Kings, and this is a Walmart exclusive. Um, and a lot of those Walmart exclusives have just been sitting there. But this one, I'm I getting that cool. one. No. I'm getting that one. I need an Eddie. Uh, the first one was pretty okay, solid. Um, I'm curious what's under the soft goods shirt. Yeah, this one is better. Good point. Uh, two, things i'm curious oh yeah he comes with two heads so you'll be able to do him without the hat but yeah i'm genuinely curious what's under the soft goods if it's his wrestling like singlet shirt thing mm -hmm. that he wears because if it is then i'll definitely get that one because i want him with gear um but yeah i i actually almost bought his uh his first uh mm -hmm figure through I, I have it i got inside. it and i'm glad i did he was one of my favorites i wish they'd bring him back on tv um, but i think he's injured potentially but yeah he's on ring of honor too yeah uh you mean a dark 2.0 um, <laughs> correct. <anyway. laughs> correct this isn't a wrestling show this is a uh, figure show so continuing on apparently this, the, this week it's a wrestling show this week it's so like. wrestling heavy and i don't even hate it um and i love it um but this looks really cool this is the ocho chris jericho he is so tan and so purple and I'm gonna i might buy one. that that's a that's I'm a very totally. toyetic that's a very toyetic look and I only own one AEW Jericho and it's uh, the little bit of the bubbly. This might be Number the two. second one that I get. Yeah, even I'm though it's it the Ocho, sure. this might be the dose. Very, <laughs> the dose. I like it. Very toyetic. Love it. Uh, one of the few uh, exclusives I'm going to get from uh, Walmart. Uh, we also have speaking of exclusives, these are the. Amazon exclusive. This one is Garcia. And, I'm sorry, Danielson and Mox, um, and uh, with their little thing they did together as they were forming the Black Bull Combat Club, um, and then also jumping ahead here, uh, what everybody is here for is Hookhausen. Um, yep. I know both of us have already pre-ordered this. Um, yep. The big difference in this, uh, these are the red and black tights that were worn uh in this first couple of matches uh we also have a hard goods cape instead of soft goods i kind of like how it looks better um yeah but uh overall they both look really cool and uh i'm really excited for this uh this box set yeah i'll probably display that one loose and then the uh the other one mint on card just because i like the the presentation of it but this looks really cool too but no i, I yeah. totally agree. yeah um the other box is cooler but this kind of set so it's, it's a it's a must buy for me. So if you haven't checked it out and you like Dan has an Andor hook, uh, take a look. Amazon not super yep. pricey either. Um, nope. Reasonable. And you don't have to put money down. It doesn't charge until it ships. So I mean, it's dangerous. But uh, then you get surprise charge, and you're like, oh no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, we also have a uh, Target exclusive uh, Adam Cole, uh, just kind of a repaint of Adam Cole, which is fine, cool. Um, it's there is so. it just me or have like every single one of Adam Cole's figures been the same outside I mean, of like obviously the gears changed, but like 
I mean, I feel like every he, I mean, he's the same as always. He always has the same look and the same stuff in WWE right. and AEW. It's all. I mean, right. he didn't really use the jacket, but it's a lot of the times just the same, just repainted. But right, because like other other ones, like they'll do, you know, like their behind the scenes gear, or they'll mm-hmm. do like some notable gear, or like they change up their looks. Like Adam Cole has had the same look for like. Mm-hmm a decade now yep. and like listen it works for him i love adam cole he's a great he's a he's a great talent but mm-hmm. it's just funny to me that like all of his figures look the exact same although this head sculpt looks pretty good um but w or uh, mattel had some good ones too so i don't know i'm not gonna pick it up because as much as i do like adam cole i'm i'm not that big of a fan of his and uh like i said mm-hmm. i could just easily go pick up one of his elites at a lower price and and that would be just fine and the uh, dog agrees with me yeah, uh, Bo. That's Bo. He's he agrees 100. He's a Adam Cole mark though, so <laughs> yeah, he'll get you. Um, speaking, of, you mentioned of uh, Mattel, and I you mentioned uh, dog there. Um, the dog face gremlin uh, and his son are featured in this set, um, and this is um, the Elite 104. Um, and we have Drew McIntyre, the dog face gremlin, uh, who recently had a altercation and wrestle upon um but uh we also have braun baker i feel like the big ones from this are gonna be braun big ba- braun baker braun breaker and solo sokoa you also yeah. have um uh i'm completely uh, dakota kai i yeah. just completely lost her name uh aj styles pretty cool too but i feel like this is the ten thousandth uh drew mcintyre we've seen yeah and similar to Adam Cole, which I just mentioned, a lot of the AJ Styles ones look pretty much the same, just with maybe varying hair lengths. Mm-hmm. Um, the Solo Sokoa, yeah, exactly. You, you can tell what year it is based on mm-hmm. the hair length. Yeah. Um, it's like rings of a tree. But Solo Sokoa and uh, Braun are two that I'm probably going to pick up. The Solo, my only complaint is he's not he's not thick enough. I don't want to sound weird about it, but like he's like way too muscular there. Like he's a very muscular, powerful person. So that's not like solo. Please mm-hmm. do not come after me. I just mean like he's a little, a little stockier. He's a little too shredded. A little too shredded. A little more meat on the bones. Yeah, and then Braun, I am a big fan of the chase gear. Like that gear is cool, but the chase gear is because uh, that was based on like the the maryland flag or baltimore flag or whatever mm-hmm. um because he played for university of maryland in football mm-hmm. so that's kind of like his tribute to to his background I and so good. that's a and i just think that's a really cool flag so mm-hmm. i'm probably going to try to get the chase i'm not going to pay the 40 dollars that ringside is asking for it right now i'll either wait in, or i'll just try my luck and see if i can find it in like a year when these finally show up in stores um, but I'm definitely gonna get that solo at the very least, and probably gonna get the brawn. Yeah, I know your flag mark, so it's a good thing. Noted flag mark. Noted flag I do mark. have a lot of flags in my basement. You do, yes, you do. Uh, mm-hmm. wrestling and otherwise. No Confederate flags <laughs> to be record. clear. Don't Legally. just no, let's go, Brandon. Not to get political, but I'm just saying I don't have any political <laughs> flags. I don't have any Confederate flags. They're all sports related, okay? Just yeah. for sports just and sports for... entertainment. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. The only sports that matter. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's the news—a real wrestling-heavy uh, one. Um, but let's uh, time to take a look at some weekly pickups. Um, so if for this, um, I'm going to go first this week because I want to. Go. Um, so I got a few things. Um, I'll finish this off. So there's one more that has been one more, one more on pre-order. I mentioned I got last week at Lexington, um, but this is Broadway. He has finally come. Um, and he is wonderful. Um, this was uh, pre-ordered and said it was coming and it came. Um, and so another set. Um, as I uh, hopefully my display will be. Uh, up sometime in the near future, hopefully next month or so. I mean, hey, man, you might have a new base of operations here. Exactly. So. Soon, so we might have uh, room for that. And then I'm going to have to step up my game if you do that. It's going to be an uh, act of war. But, you know, we'll yeah. get there when we when we get there. We'll see. We'll see how that ends up looking up. Um, but I have also, I got, so I went on a little bit of a, uh, I'll do the next here. Um, sorry, I'm changing gears. <laughs> So I also got, this is, uh, I have this on sale on Amazon. This is the Pudgy Pig. This is uh, Lightning Collection. It's um, terrifying. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this one? He ate everything. 
Yeah, no, I do. Like, it's one of those things that I had deleted from my head, and then you there. just showed me that, and it just unlocked everything. Oh, yeah. That is terrifying. Yep. It is. It's terrifying, um, and I love it. And again, I'm excited to put that display up. There's a few displays that are going to be a lot of fun putting up. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, so moving on from there, um, I kind of dove into um, a new collection here. Um, so I started getting, and I just recently took this out of the package, so I am excited about this one. Uh, but this is a vintage Kenner Ooh. Robin. Um, I got a couple of them here. This is the one with the, uh, or the only the one Robin, but he has a uh, set him up later, but he's got a little like glider thing. But uh, so I like, I got it. I'm glad he has a soft goods still. Um, some extra little tags I'm gonna have to get rid of. Um, but I got Robin, um, and I got. Also, the same line. So I got the basics just to just to get it just the base level. Um, right. Comes with his um, accessories here, but Joker from the same awesome. Kenner line. Um, did you have any of these growing up? I do. Yeah, I I did. I do. I have the only one I currently have in my collection is an old Mister Freeze because I like I don't know if you I'm sure you have this. I don't know why I'm saying yes. That guy right there. This guy. Um, so this guy breathe eventually because the carding is okay. But I got throughout this from Landon at uh, TNT Collectibles nice. this week. Yeah, so, so I have that, and Mr. Freeze. Shout out Landon, as always. Thank um, you, one of my favorite figures from childhood, and it's one that I remember playing with a lot. That one I remember playing with a lot, and I remember using Poison Ivy a lot because I think that was like the only female figure that I had. So she ended up being the stand-in in like a lot of situations uh, for my different, like, no, like way different, like rescuing situations. I don't mean anything weird. Like, I mean, I'm sure there was weird stuff too, but like, no, no, no. Like it was just like, she, she, you know, cause I grew up in the nineties. So it was like slightly yeah. misogynist looking back, but it was just like, oh, she has to be right. Damsel in distress. Right. Exactly. Listen, it's not right, but it, it was what it was when I was, you know, eight. So I apologize for eight year old me. Um, oh, you. You no, but you but anyways all that is to say i have certain figures that i remember that are part of like my core memories and that mr freeze is one of them that poison ivy is another one so i would really like to have both of those in my collection i do have the mr freeze mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure unless no i don't think i gave that one to landon because that might be mine incidentally but i don't think it is so i, um, I still have mine did no, I, have I, look for back? I don't remember okay I don't Probably think so. Not when I not if I get sold it to him, it would not have had a crease mm -hmm. when I sold it to him. Yeah. Um, but maybe it gained a crease. But I, I gotta see. Maybe I still have it. I don't know. TBD. I, my plan. I'm not gonna get all the different Batman's because there's so many. Um, they do so many re repaints. Um, with other yeah. accessories. Um, I'm gonna do the key villains and Robin and um, Batman. But on that, I've tried to get the regular Batman. It's like a hundred bucks. So I can do the stand-in. Uh, this is a mail-in special. Um, he looks essentially the same, Ooh. just a little bit of yeah. uh, coloration there. A little okay, bluer. Cool accessory, little jetpack, attack pack thing. But it was a mail-in special, and I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, this is my stand-in Batman, and hopefully maybe I never get the other one. We'll see. Um, but uh, those, if you get uh, the right price, you know, never know. Yeah. So I figured, I kind of dove in there with those yeah. uh vintage ones of it. I mean, that's a line that I like. I never really had. I had some bits and pieces and um, I had the Riddler, I know, but then I had like the 89 Batman with the belt that was like on a string. And um, yeah. there's other ones I had, but it was never all. And then I had like the Penguin from the t from the movie and it was never all the same series. So that's something I kind of wanted. And so that's why we're going to go down the rabbit hole. Um, I like we'll it. Talk, we'll talk more about vintage and uh, modern stuff later. Um, when would you get? Good. Yeah, so I, I think it was last week when I trash talked Funko for releasing those mini Funkos. Yes. So um, I felt you know guilty about that, obviously. You so should. I get so this week it was a Funko heavy week. It's actually all mm -hmm. Funkos all the time. Um, so the first one I have brought these up before when I showed my Sean Kemp, but one of my favorite lines that uh, Funko has right now is the Slam covers. Um, there are two that I don't have or two that I didn't have. Um, and I have them in my, I don't know if you do this, but I had them in my save for later on Amazon. And so I just keep an eye on the price. I've made a decision that um, I wasn't going to pay full price for any of them. I was going to wait and just be patient and pick them up whenever they dropped. And I've gotten every single one 
besides one, I've only paid like $12 a piece for them. And they're like 20 to $25 Funko. So I'm happy about that. And so one of my recent ones, just one of the two that I didn't have just popped down to like twelve fifty or something like that. So mm -hmm. I decided to pick it up. And that is this Slam Jason Williams uh okay. white chocolate kings uh for basketball fans you'll you'll understand why this is cool i'm a big fan of this one um <clears throat> another one i did show i'm pretty sure i showed a couple weeks ago on here that i picked up a cody rhodes american nightmare walmart exclusive funko I looking for that couldn't find it myself so it's so like literally the next so they had like 10 of them out there when i when i bought mine and the next time i went to walmart which would only been a couple days later because i'm unfortunately there a lot because i'm addicted to fig hunting uh they were already gone so they have got scooped up quick and they're like 25 dollars on ebay so i oh, guess yeah. i should have picked up a couple extras at the time but um I, this one though was on sale for like five dollars or something and i figured it would go well with that and that is the american dream Dr. the rose baby Ooh, so i'm gonna put cool. this one i'm gonna display this next to my american nightmare father Ooh, I and like son. That. I like that a Get lot. Get them together. Uh, and then the last one, and this is uh, something that only Kevin and I will get, is that I was texting Kevin when I was out of town the other day, and I always have to check out whatever the local Targets and Walmarts have when I'm out of town if I have the time. So I popped into a Target in Grand Rapids when I was over there visiting, and I saw a couple of WWE Funkos that I haven't had the opportunity to buy. I was torn between two. One of them was Rhea Ripley. The other one was classic debuting Rocky Maivia from Survivor Series. Um, and I was really torn on it uh, because I'm a big fan of Rhea Ripley. I have a number of Rock Funkos, like two or three. And um, I just think it's like a really unique one. So I decided I was only going to let myself have one. I have some modern and retro in my collection. But at the end of the day, Hold I on. went I'm gonna with... Take, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. I think that you went with Rocky Maivia to continue on with your multiple rocks. Got it. Yes, sir. Got it. Yep. You were absolutely 100% correct. Rocky Maivia debuting rock to go with uh, a few others that I have, which I'm just noticing this is actually happens to be the same set as the Dusty Rose that I also picked up. So uh, okay. good set. But yeah, so like I said, I trash talked Funko last week. Not really trash talked. I just was questioning why they were making those mini guys and saying that I wasn't going to buy them. And then I decided to show them by buying three by Funko buying Pops some, this yeah. week. It's good. So that, that was my... Yeah, exactly. Those were my pickups this week. Uh, and mm -hmm. I still need to find a place for all of them. But I'll get there. Yeah. I'll just put them in a box like I am. Um, let them breathe. Or at least in the package. Um, so, um, so we uh, our topic of the our topic of discussion today um, is about ha uh, about retros and vintage. Um, uh, I'm sorry, vintage and uh, modern, and what's the one to collect? Um, and I know this really depends on what you're collecting because some things don't have any modern. Um, but these days, everything's getting like a retro type thing, whether it be biker mice from Mars or wrestling, mm -hmm. or anything, you can get some vintage and, and uh, modern. Uh, but what are the pros and cons and such? Um, what are your, what's your take on this, pros and cons of doing vintage or, or uh, modern? So my, like my personal rule of thumb is, in most instances, I will lean vintage. Um, I think vintage collecting is a lot simpler. It can be more difficult in the fact that they're usually more expensive, especially compared to, to some find. of the modern offerings. Harder to find, but it's much more straightforward in the fact that like you know which ones you have to collect. There's a finite number of them. They're not going to release any new ones because they came out 30 years ago. So you yeah. know what you're looking for. I love that, so list, I, that the list is done and you're just like for Batman, I can look and be yep. like, all right, I'm not going to get these. I'm going to get yep. those opposed to like uh, with like the DC superpowers when those come out. I'm like, ah, I guess I'll get this one or that one. It's you don't yeah. have to make a choice. It's just, no, nope, this is the list. This is what I'm getting. Yep. It's a built in like it's a built in rule, right? It's like a built in barrier, like bumpers that stop you yeah. from going into the gutter. Um, so I'm so I am a fan of that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. What I will say is I will tend to go more modern if I'm looking for like more quote unquote bells and whistles. So like mm -hmm. if I'm looking for like a really nice like say I'm looking at a really nice Super 7 like Andre the Giant or I'm looking at an ultimate edition or a supreme edition of an AEW or, or WWE figure. Like if I'm going to get a classic uh, like attitude era, triple H figure, mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to buy the jacks. I will go out and get the ultimate edition of that one because it looks more like that. Actually, one. it looks like him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, you know, that to me is what it comes down to is like, there are certain lines that I want vintage for, and they're mainly lines that I collected as a kid or mm-hmm. something that I watched as a kid. So like I collect vintage WCW figures. I, at one point in time, collected a whole bunch of the toy biz Spider-Man uh, animated series figures. Mm-hmm. I have played around with the idea of getting um, some of the Kenner Batmans that you just got. And I, at one point in time, had all of the uh, like 10 inch Power Rangers fully Mm -hmm. articulate Mm -hmm. figures like from way back in the day. Um, Those ones I want to go vintage on because I had those as a kid Mm -hmm. or I wanted those as a kid. And I remember that. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I'm just looking for something like cool to display for like my wrestling display or something like that, I'm probably going to go more towards uh, modern. Yeah. I like the idea that it's more articulated. Um, It depends on which purposes. Are you looking to display it? Are you going to get out of the box? Do you want multiple heads or Mm -hmm. do you want it for nostalgia purposes? Uh, it's it's really depends on how you're going to display it and what the purpose is behind it. Like with the Batman stuff, I mean, this is the the, the Joker. You can see it's got sh- arms, it's got swivel legs, and it's got a head. That's one, two, three, four, five points of articulation. Uh, whereas, and this is the one of the DC superpowers in Newark. Very similar. You can see kind of very similar in size. Um, they match up. I mean, you look at them; they could be the same line, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. um, but this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, seven, two more, but <laughs> just two more. But I mean, they, it's, it's very similar with that, but it's a little bit more, more bells and whistles, but not as much. Um, and you'll probably get the likeness a little better just because of the technology now. Um, right. But it just depends on what you're willing to pay. Um, but I mean, some of these Lucy's you can get them for cheap. So it just depends if you're going to do on um, card, it might be harder yeah. to find, but if you're going to do Lucy. It's you can get you can get them for like ten bucks a pop. That's just not bad. No, not at all. And a lot you can get even less. But a lot of the vintage ones, I seem like I, I'm a mint on card collector mm-hmm. in a lot of way in a lot of lines. But mm-hmm. um, vintage, especially, I like mint on card. Uh, oh, reason yeah. being think- is that like, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I'm I'm really picky with that. But like. Um, but that's honestly the the minty carding for me is almost like a, a thing to prevent me from buying too much. It's it's kind of a rule that I adopted out of out of necessity. Um, but anyways, I it's like the whole presentation thing for me with the old figures because typically they're not like you were just saying they're not going to always look the best. They're not always going to have the most articulation. It's uh, it's kind of like the idea behind those reaction figures that we talked about last week. Um, is that like I want to display them because I like the art, I like the design, I like I, I just like the the aesthetics of it, and so I'm just going to leave it in the box. Whereas I am more prone to open things of modern releases because one, I can probably have another chance of getting it if I if I you know decide that I wanted it mint on card, and also the boxes in most instances are not nearly as uh, aesthetically pleasing as they were back then they don't pop as much unless you are getting like a specific box set like for example that dan house we just showed or it's made um, for some box. of the yeah the NECAs, like those are those are made to to potentially be displayed mint on card like they mm-hmm. know that about the collectors um but yeah so for me modern is more like oh i'm gonna let it breathe vintage more i'm gonna display it mint on card um yeah i think it's nice to have a little mixture of both right like Mm -hmm. there's some lines that i i prefer vintage and there's some lines that i prefer modern and sometimes i'll mix and match like i have some vintage like wcw stuff like nwo that is mixed in in my nwo collection with like more releases like the you know the ones i just picked up last week these guys the retros that i still haven't put away or done anything with they're still in the box they're still carded. But. Yeah, collect how you want to. If whatever your display looks like is up to you. However you want to display them. I mean, whatever brings you joy, I guess. Kevin, that's not nearly as uh, as aggressive and um, like I need you to fall. Like I need a hot take. Need I need you to fall. Hot take. One way or the other. Um, hot take. Toys are getting really expensive, and I'm going to do vintage because they're cheaper sometimes. Uh, that's my hot take. I like that. That's actually a really good point. Like you brought up the Kenners mm-hmm. being like cheaper, especially if you're going Lucy. Mm-hmm. 
That's a great point, right? Like, yeah. if you were wanted to do Star Wars, you could do Power of the Force, and you could mm -hmm. buy. They're I've like, I've looked at those. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you can get I, those for like five bucks, if not less, depending. I looked on at some. I looked at some Batman the Animated Series stuff, some like highly articulated DC Direct stuff, and like the Riddler was like forty bucks, and I, or I could get the original kind of Riddler for like ten, and I, I feel like there's more nostalgia to that. Um, sure, it's things are expensive, and <laughs> sometimes you get the cheaper one that is maybe even better. Yeah, and I think people that collect are more prone to nostalgia just in general. Yeah. So it probably comes down to what you have nostalgia for. Like, mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to go out and buy, like, vintage uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys because mm -hmm. I didn't collect them back then and I wasn't hugely into them back then. Mm -hmm. If I decided I wanted Mutant Ninja Turtle toys, I would probably go with the more modern stuff or like the movie ones that NECA released because I think those are cooler and more like toyetic to display for me. Mm -hmm. um, but for people that have a nostalgia for the original cartoon like yourself and you got mm -hmm. the giant, the the whatever the bust is called behind you there. Turtle band turtle van uh like then you'll obviously lean towards more of the retro stuff because you remember mm -hmm. that stuff yeah. so um yeah i think it's just like a nice it's awesome that we have the choice to do that choice. and like mm -hmm. there's so, so many, many retro lines stores and... oh my gosh mm -hmm. I, that's one minor complaint i like the reissue or the remakes of old ones but like i'm not necessarily the biggest fans of ones that are designed to look retro that were never released retro like we talked about with the reaction ones last week um what about the it depends super on the sevens. price tag what about the super seven like ninja turtle ones where like it's supposed to look like the old toys but it's like as if they were ultimates right like those are those are fine because they're they're mm -hmm. set up to be like the ultimate edition of them right, right. like they're set up it's to like be... them down essentially right i don't yeah i don't like the like stripped down dumbed down ones that also have high price tags oh, yeah. like that yeah, doesn't exactly. make sense to me one or the other yeah, yeah exactly i, I yeah, can exactly. more for less correct like I get I that one to me, if anything, if anything feels like a ripoff, those feel like a ripoff to me because it's almost like they know and I'm hot take. I got to ramp up. Rah! But like but like that one feels like more of a ripoff because it's like we're making a cheaper, more basic toy, but we're going to still charge you what we would charge for like yeah. a more articulated toy because it looks like it's a retro one. It's like mm -hmm. what? But that doesn't really make sense as to why it needs to be more expensive. Like you're just printing mm -hmm. a different box. Um, it feels like you're just doing it just to do it. Yep. But no, totally. 100%. I think that uh, collect how you want to, but uh, at the end of the day, you got to pay for it. So, correct. Um, but let us know what your take is. Do you do more vintage? Do you do modern? Do you do both? When do you choose and how? Uh, let us know in the comments. Um, and thanks, uh, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, uh, join as us always. Next week, it's a great week to collect, and uh, yeah, always a great week to collect and help us get to a thousand subscribers. That's our current big milestone. We are getting We're nearly close at eight hundred. Yeah, so if you guys aren't already subscribed, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. You can ring the notification bell so you know when we're going to post new videos. Do Comment, it. like, do everything you got to do. Well, everyone, <laughs> on that note, have a great week. Join us next week. And, uh, yeah. Bang, bang. <laughs>